Hello and welcome to blog 20, me learning to play the Melodeon. And today is not so much about playing, it's more about showing you this uh, funny little box that I bought during the summer. So it's in the keys of G, C and F, so the outside row is the key of G, middle row is C, inside row is F, and um, if you've heard of a C, F Melodeon, well it's these two rows of course, and you've got the extra G row on the outside. So it's, it's a three row instrument and it's got 12 bass buttons um, and it's pretty small as you can probably see. Um, I sort of really fell in love with the look of it. It's very sort of, uh, very sort of art deco I suppose. It's a 1930s box from Saxony in Germany. Uh, very unusual, it has this kind of curved um, button arrangement. The buttons normally on a melodeon go straight up and down, these curve slightly, and that actually works pretty well. I've got very, very long, quite thin fingers, and that actually works pretty well for me. Um, it's got this kind of white perloid finish. Pull it up a bit closer so you can see that. Um, and this rather nice grill, I don't know if the, the camera will pick that up. So this grill is kind of green and black and it's, it's rather nice, it's a, a bit battered but still in pretty good condition and it's one of the nicest features um, of this box. Also fairly unusual, the three accidental buttons are black, which is, uh, which is quite good, I quite, I quite like that. Um, and also, there's also extra, some extra buttons on this so somehow they've managed to cram all these uh, buttons in a fairly small box. Uh, the bellows aren't stunning, has to be said. They're, you know, they're okay, but they're not, uh, they're not in stunning condition. And they're probably leaking a little bit, but not, uh, not too badly. Uh, more of that a bit later. Uh, as far as the other side goes, the base end, um, as I say, got the 12, the 12 buttons, uh, air button, usual grill, and, uh, and there's the back of it. And it's got this metal plate which says GCF on the back. So what I'm going to do in this blog is I'm going to pull this apart because uh, I've had some repair work done to it, show you uh, the insides of it if you're interested and at the end I'll play you uh, a simple tune on the three rows just so you can hear what it sounds like. So uh, let's get my screwdriver out and we'll begin. Okay, I'm going to do this freehand uh, so that I can get in close on the bits I want to show you. So this is obviously the treble uh, side of the instrument uh, with the uh, grill removed and the finger plate removed. And uh, that's quite nice, isn't it? Um, you can see that the three rows of buttons have got felt behind them. And that, what that does, in case you don't know, it just stops... Uh, the button going down too far so it, it reduces the action and it makes it more comfortable to play. You know, in case you don't know what happens when you press the button on a melodeon, this is, this is what happens. And we do have a, a very good video by Lester shows this in more detail but you can see press the button and the pallet lifts away I'm getting to see that and you can see uh, that lets air into the reeds. Um, there's different ways of attaching uh, the rods uh, to the pallets. This, these have been done by glue, and there's, uh, I'll show you another way of doing it when I show you the, the base box. Uh, notice um, these strips here We've made the grill sit out a bit proud. Get the grill. Um, yeah, those strips have been made so that the grill, when it's in place, it's, it sits out. A bit further so that when you press the buttons so when you press the buttons uh, they don't crash into the grill so uh, one little safety point here is uh, I've taken the screws off and they kind of match up to the plate these two outside ones are bigger I often do this I do like a, a little map um, so it follows around the holes just so I know which screw goes where when I put them back uh, so uh, I'm sure you knew that. But anyway, uh, that's this side. Let's show you the other side. And uh, 
So yeah, these are the lead blocks. And uh, it's got a plate across them here. Okay, keep them in place. And um, It's a lot of... Uh, a lot of reeds in a very confined space there, isn't it? So uh, it's had all new valves uh, a few years ago. And uh, it's pretty clean, isn't it? For 1930s, it's, it's pretty impressive. So that's the treble side of the instrument. And we'll now show you the bass. OK, so this is the, uh, the bass end uncovered, as it were. Uh, just to talk you through this. Uh, this is the infamous... Um, air button, which uh, I broke uh, having owned the instrument for just a couple of hours. And um, and uh, Martin White, who's my trusty Melodium Fettler, has uh, kind of rebuilt it. And he's put, and you can see this here, a little washer here to stop the pin coming out. And uh, he's redone the, the pallet as well down there, so that it covers a bit better. And uh, yeah, that, that, that seems to be fine now, thank goodness. It caused me no end of grief a few weeks ago. Um, very strange arrangement here with the rods, isn't it? It's a real sort of tangled mess, but it, it does kind of work. As you can see what happens, here are the, the buttons, and the push the button, and the spring goes back, and the pallet lifts. Notice how these uh, pallets are attached a uh, different way. These are held by a single piece of circular linen, which is just glued on. So that's a, a different way of doing it, isn't it? And uh, yeah, the cord pallets are these triangular ones, and uh, they are obviously covering three holes. Yeah, and the and the base notes, the base note pallets are kind of square. They're just covering a single hole. Um, I mean, yeah, you look at it, and it is sort of fairly crude, isn't it? But it, it does kind of work, and. Um, when I got this, all these base buttons were at different heights, and, uh, and Martin has, has sort of bent and manip manipulated these rods so that the base base buttons are um, all the same height, or more or less the same height. It's practically impossible. Uh, if you look at these inserts on the buttons, you may notice this one is a slightly different colour. That's because it was missing, and uh, and Martin managed to. Uh, melt some something into there, I'm not quite sure what it was, uh, but it's made a pretty good uh, insert for that button. Um, yeah, and on this side, of course, you've got the uh, the reed blocks. Um, all pretty straightforward. So notice these are sort of kind of laying down rather than standing up. And if you look at Owen Woods's um, blog about uh, this instrument that he did a few months ago, he explains that far better than I ever could. <laughs> okay, so that's a quick trip around the, the insides of the instrument. I'm going to put it all back together again and show you what it sounds like now. Okay, so the most important thing, of course, is what does it sound like? Um, I mean, that's the main reason I bought it, apart from the fact that I fell in love with the looks of it. I really like the sound of it. Um, um, it's a, a two voice instrument that means that every button you play on the treble side has got two reeds, okay? Uh, uh, so as you can hear it's fairly it's fairly wet but not too ridiculous. This instrument has been uh, what we call dedic tuned and that means to say that normally when you have a two voice instrument one of the reeds is tuned to uh, A440, in other words, concert pitch, and the other uh, reed is tuned a little bit sharp, a few cents sharper there, uh, obviously depending how wet you want it. Um, but with this kind of tuning, uh, the two reeds kind of straddle the A440, if you like. So one, one reed is tuned flat, and the other one sharp, to give you that kind of beating that you can hear there. Uh, and the bass though, of course, is tuned to constant pitch. No beating of reeds there. So basically, the, the, the bass side is sort of right on the money on constant pitch, uh, A440 if you like. And uh, the right hand side kind of straddles that. One reed's below, one's above. And the net effect is very pleasing. Yeah. 
Martin also does on the major chords, he detunes the third very, very slightly. And that has um, a nice effect with the treble. I'm not quite sure why, but it does sound quite nice. Uh, the, the minor. The minor chord that the third is tuned to the correct pitch, but on, on the major chord, the third is flat. And that stops that sort of funny old clash that you get. And so, yeah, it's a, a, quite an interesting way of tuning the instrument, and uh, the overall effect is, is pretty nice. Um, the main reason I got into three row a few months ago. Uh, is I wrote a tune, actually a song, many, many years ago for my kids to sing called Dunking Biscuits, uh, which is a, a humorous song, which you can, uh, if you look hard enough, you'll find a, a video of Kids Choir 2000 singing it on YouTube. Um, but it occurred to me it'd be a really good tune to play on the melodeon, and the only melodeon I could find uh, which I could play this tune on was a three row, and specifically a GCF, because uh, it's in the key of F. And uh, once I've learnt how to play on this, I will we'll, uh, demo that for you. I can't do it yet, it's, it's too hard for me at the moment. Uh, so I'm afraid it's the dreaded Speed the Plough, uh, which I'm going to play in the three keys of, of the instrument. Key of F, uh, key of C, key of G, just so you can hear it. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with this now. One of the problems I had with it was the bellows was just sort of practically dropping open and Martin had to spend quite a long time, a very long time in fact, uh, tweaking things, filling in holes, uh, refacing the base pallets uh, to uh, cure the leaks. It's still not as tight as some of my newer boxes, but you know, 80 years of age, uh, it's not really surprising, is it? Um, I could get some new bellows for it, but I'm going to certainly see how I go for the moment and um, see if I can live with it the way it is. No, so I'm only using one strap. It's the first instrument uh, that I've only used one strap on because it is actually light enough. Uh, to do that uh, and all my other instruments I use two straps on. So there we are, this is the Sibylla Brandt GCF. I um, hope you found that interesting. If you have any questions uh, do get in touch with me and stand by for my uh, performance of uh, Speed the Plough. Sorry about that. And hopefully in a few weeks time I'll be able to play Dunking Biscuits on this which would be very very exciting won't it. See you soon.